Well, good afternoon, church. Welcome to another Wednesday Bible study with Pastor Brian. I'm glad that you've dropped by for this devotional tonight. Uh, you know, we're in the month of November, and, and we're just a, a couple of weeks away from Thanksgiving. Doesn't seem like it ought to be uh, that time already, but here we are. And, uh, you know, there's so many scriptures, and especially in the book of Psalms, that instruct us to give thanks and and to give praise. And, and I want to read just a couple of them uh, for you tonight. One of them is, comes from Psalm 97, verse 12. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Another one is found in Psalm 145, verses 1 through 3, and it says, I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Well, the psalmist uh, even told us a little later in Psalm, I believe it's in Psalm 150, it tells us, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. You know, here's a fellow that you may know a little uh, about. I don't know whether you know about this part of his life or not, but he knows a lot about adversity, um, but yet he still chose to, to give God thanks. You see, when he was only nine years old, his mother died. He loved to read books, but he received a very uh, meager and uh, modest ed formal education. He had a sister that died at childbirth, and at the ripe old age of 24 years old, he found himself deep in debt when a store that he had invested heavily in um, went broke and, and failed. A year later, the woman that he loved so deeply uh, got a fever and died. All of these things spun this man into a deep, dark depression. Three years later, he fell in love with another woman, and, and he asked for her hand in marriage, but she turned him down. Then at 34 years of age, he ran for, but lost, a nomination to the U.S. Congress. Only one of his four sons lived to see adulthood. One of them died when he was only four years of age. Another son died when he was 11, and another one died at 18 years old. Who is this man I've described for you? It's none other than Abraham Lincoln. I think you may know just a little bit about Abraham Lincoln, some of the other things that he did and some of the things that he accomplished. But after all that happened to him and all those negative things, you would have expected that it would have made him a rather bitter old man. But instead of allowing those things to make him a bitter man, he came to God and he allowed them to make him a better man. All of his failings, all of his sorrow, all of his grief, all of his depression, all of his disappointments, it shaped and molded him. And he chose to be a better man because of it. In 1863, while now president of the United States, he goes before Congress and he asks for them to, to create an annual day of thanksgiving. And so uh, they, they chose an annual day of thanksgiving. You see, he chose to express gratitude to God, and he led the nation to do the same. Now, I don't know about you, but I know for myself, I feel as though I'm way behind in giving God praise and giving him thanks for all that he's done for me. I haven't, I haven't been through what Abe has been through, but I've had my share of troubles and, and my disappointments and discouragements of life, and I'm pretty sure that you probably have as well. But tonight I want to ask you, what is your in spite of? What is your in spite of? Let's look at it this way. In spite of the way I was disappointed, let down, or hurt so deeply, I choose to be thankful. In spite of the failures in my life, I choose to still be thankful. Or in spite of the way I was and have been mistreated, I choose to be thankful. In spite of periods of dark depression and discouragement that I go through in my life because of situations, I still choose to be thankful. 
in spite of the way that everybody else acts. I choose to be thankful. And in spite of everything else, whatever it is, in spite of it all, I still choose to be thankful. Just as love is a choice, I believe that thankfulness is a choice as well. Will you choose to be a bitter or a better person for having gone through the difficulties and discouragements of life? This year, let me tell you, we have a lot to be thankful for. Oh, sure, there's a lot of things in this past year that have created uh, difficulties for us and caused us to do things way different than we're used to doing things. And whatever they call normal, we, we don't know what normal is anymore. Yeah, and yes, there's still a lot of changes, no doubt, yet ahead of us to, to for us to face. But as we go through this season of Thanksgiving, uh, I trust that we will allow ourselves to stop long enough and look at our lives and say thank you to God who is the source of all of those blessings. You know, there's an old song that we sing, especially along about this time of year, and we'll probably sing it again at church this year. But it is a timeless, timely, it has timeless truth. And it's a song that goes like this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you're discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you're called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. When you look at others with their lands and gold, Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings. Money cannot buy your reward in heaven, nor your home on high. So amid conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God hath done. We have so much to be grateful for. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you have taken time to, to spend this, uh, these few moments with me tonight. I'm thankful for your blessings, uh, that, that you are to us and your encouragement to, to my wife and I, and I trust that you have a very blessed, blessed Christmas when it comes. But until we get there, well, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving, and then you can have a great Christmas. But God bless you. Thank you. Let's let's pray together. What do you say? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your many blessings to us. Lord, this year has been a difficult year on many fronts in many respects, but. Lord, we're grateful that we've been able to trust you and we've been able to hang on to you and depend on you. And you've been the same through it all. And Father, as we come to you tonight, we, we may not have what others have, but if we have any measure of health, if we have any strength, if we have a dime in our pocket, if we have a roof over our head, a car in the garage, we have so much to be grateful for. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray that you would bless us. Uh, not that we would be blessed, but that we could be a blessing to others. We love you, Father, and we ask these things in Christ's powerful, precious name. Amen. Folks, I trust that you have a, have a great week. And uh, if you get the opportunity, we'd invite you to come and worship with us Sunday mornings at 1030, 3519 Maple Avenue. You're always welcome to come and worship the Lord with us. Invite you to come. Bring a friend with you. Uh, let's come expecting the Lord to meet with us. Give us a great day as we worship him. I love you. I'm praying for you and trust you have a great week. God bless you.